Hi, this is Carl from Small Biz Thoughts, and this is another SOP video for managed service providers. Last time we talked about KPIs, Key Performance Indicators, and I promised I'd give you some examples this time. But first, let me just do a quick recap. We talked about having a vision, and a lot of people hate this. They don't want to go through the exercise. But you have to figure out where you're going so you can get there. Your mission is the way that you get there. So even if you say, I just want to make enough money so I can retire. Okay, that can be your vision. Whatever it is, you got to figure out how you want your business to go. And that way you can make it happen. Now, there's lots of things that you could be measuring. Those are measures, but they're not key performance indicators. By definition, a key performance indicator means there's only a handful of them. Your business may only have five to ten total. All these other things, you, you know, you measure how many hours did Lisa put in? How much do we have in state unemployment insurance that has to be paid with the next payroll? What's the cost of parking? You know, there's all kinds of stuff that you measure in your business that doesn't get you to the single most important thing you have to do, which is your vision. So in terms of your vision and your mission, what are the key things that drive you in that direction? Probably the most undeniable KPI is profit. And in fact, it's so fundamental that it's almost uninteresting. A lot of people like revenue, but I have to tell you, it takes about 30 seconds of coaching before you're told, forget revenue. Revenue is a top line number that people like to use to get attention. But the real juicy goodness is in profit. And by profit, I mean, you know, sometimes they use the term EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, dividends, and amortization. Fine. For most of us, that's the net operating profit and EBITDA are essentially the same thing. So profit is awesome, but it's not a very useful KPI because it relies on all the other things. So let's talk about what are some of the KPIs that you might actually measure in your managed service business. Okay, here are a handful of actual KPIs that you might measure. First of all, recurring revenue, and in particular, recurring revenue as a percentage of total revenue. I love to see businesses be up at 70, 80, 90 percent recurring revenue. Now, what does that mean? Again, all of these things have lots of other factors that come into play. If you're looking at total recurring revenue, it means that you're putting an emphasis on that piece and not hardware sales and not project labor. If you say, well, I want 40 percent project labor, that's cool. Totally legit. That means your green light for recurring revenue is going to be 60% minus whatever you do for hardware and software. So if you say, okay, 10% hardware and software and 40% project, that means you have a 50% goal. That 50% of all of your revenue goes into recurring revenue. I hope that this shows you just the, the tip of the iceberg about why you have to pay attention to mission, vision, and values. If it is your goal to fundamentally rely on recurring revenue, you want it to be as high as possible. But you have other things in your business that are going on. So you need to have a green light, orange light, red light area for each of these. So let's say that green light is 40% and above recurring revenue. So you want to be 40 to 50%. That's great. So maybe your orange is below that. What's red? Is red below 25? When are you in danger of no longer having that be one of the defining factors in your business? Only you can make those decisions. Again, it's based on vision and mission. Next is product margin, and in particular, what's the percent of profit, percent of margin that you make on products and next services. 
Now, personally, I think margin is one of these old indicators that I don't like very much, and I don't think people should pay attention to it unless 50% of your revenue comes from software and hardware, in which case it's very, very important. If 10% of your total revenue comes from hardware and software, then the margin becomes a little less important, only because I want it to be 70, 80, 90, 200, 500 percent. So you're not going to be measuring whether it's 1 or 2 or 3 percent, or 10 or 15 or 20 percent. You're going to be looking at 75, 85 percent profit on margin. So in that sense, it becomes irrelevant because it's not, uh, it's not a key part of your revenue, and it's just going to be so big that it's sort of not comparable to the old ways that people used to pay attention to this stuff. Finally, there's things like customer satisfaction. So this might be a net promoter score, or it might be some regular survey that you send out to your clients. It might be measured by the number of angry phone calls that you're no longer getting, right? Um, I don't like negative measures, so I don't like you to say, oh, we want this to be as low as possible, right? So don't measure negative phone calls. But figure out what it is in customer satisfaction that you do want to measure and do it consistently. All of those things are indicators of how separate pieces of the business are doing. In the next video, I'm going to talk about some of the uh, leading and lagging indicators and how they're related to each other. Now let's look at some KPIs for the service department. Okay. Inside your service department, this is where everybody wants to put all their attention. So I would say the single most important thing you want to look at is backlog. What does that mean? Well, here's the deal. A lot of people have a negative impression of backlog, but backlog is really the number of hours, the total hours inside your service board. So every ticket should have a time estimate. Setting up a, a new Microsoft Office, you might put in 15 or 30 minutes as a time estimate. A new project might have 60 hours of labor in it, right? But when you look at all of the tickets in your system, and you look at all of the hours, you can add them all up. Obviously, this is a great example of a KPI. Why is that? Well, because it requires you to put all of your time into the system. It requires that you have good estimates of all of the time in all of the tickets, and that you actually track the total. The total is your so-called backlog. Again, people don't like that term backlog, but if your backlog is zero, you are bankrupt, right? You have to have some tickets in the system so that you know you should actually have people show up for work tomorrow. So what is a healthy backlog? Well, you have to figure that out, and you do that by measuring it consistently. You need to see how much time comes into your system and then bloats the backlog, and how much gets worked by your technicians and reduces the backlog, and it moves in and out. It's literally like the lungs of your business breathing as time comes into and moves out of your system. So. What is your backlog? What is a good backlog and what is a bad backlog? Again, we want that red, yellow, green to indicate what we think is good and what is bad. I can't even throw out example numbers because it depends on whether you have 22 technicians or five or one. So you have to look at your system and you have to figure out what's the average. You have to watch it for a while, figure out what's healthy, what's profitable, and so forth. But it's a truly great KPI. If I were to pick one number that I want you to track, it is backlog hours. The second one is tech utilization. So tech utilization means the amount of time that a technician spends actually delivering labor. Okay. So some of the time that the technician spends is in meetings. Some is in training, taking exams, going to lunch, all of that. I really want to see you track your technician's time 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. And that way you can look at all of their time and see what percentage of it is actually in service of either a managed service contract or billable time and materials. Along those lines, 
what's normal. Again, you've got to measure it a lot to figure out what's normal for you, but I would say your average service manager who also does service delivery is going to be in the range of about 40% utilization. Your average technician, who's pretty decent, is going to be in the range of 60 to 70%. A technician who sits in a cubicle, never leaves the office, and does everything remotely is probably going to be more in the range of 80%. So you've got to figure out what's the norm for your business. And again, each technician gets a red light, green light, yellow light. Other good indicators are average ticket age. You'll have a bunch of tickets at half an hour, a bunch of tickets at one hour, a bunch of tickets at three hours, right? What's that total average across all of your tickets? And I know that sounds like it's kind of unrelated, but assuming that there isn't a reason why you had a bunch of 15-minute tickets one month, right? It's going to be normal over time. That average is going to draw meaning into your company. So when you look at the average age of a ticket, you can determine how efficiently your staff is taking care of problems. If you see the age growing slightly over time, you know that there's something going on. You've got to figure out, does this mean that we're providing a different level of support or we've got technicians who are less efficient? Exactly why is that? So those kinds of indicators are really good, but you got to make sure you understand what that number means. Average time on ticket is the same thing. So the, the total ticket age is one thing, and then the amount of time that's spent on a ticket is another thing. And I know they sound like they're exactly the same, but an aging ticket might not yet be closed. The average time on ticket is measured by closed tickets. So if your average ticket age is growing, then you might say, look, I want somebody to pay attention to those old tickets and we'll squish them down. The age will drop very quickly. But then when you close tickets, then you've got a measure of the true actual age of all tickets when they're closed. And so that over time measures a different thing. So again, you got to think about that and figure out what it means inside your company. But those are two really good measures. Another one that's sort of, we started with profit being so common it's meaningless. <laughs> Another one that it's kind of a good indicator, except that it should be meaningless, is downtime or uptime. Again, uh, I, I like to measure uh, downtime to be as small as possible. So I really want to measure client uptime because it's a positive measure. Well, you're now you're talking about measuring a fifth and sixth uh, decimal, right? So are we 99.99 or 99.999% uptime? Again, I hope that that's a meaningless variable within your company. All of these things matter, but the key to success is you got to pick variables that actually measure something useful inside your company. Next time, we're going to talk about those green light, red light, yellow light indicators, why you do them. And we're also going to talk about leading versus lagging indicators. For Small Biz Thoughts, this is Carl Palchuk wishing you the best of luck in your managed service business. Please like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell so you can be notified when we post a new video.